Kingdom family. So glad that you're joining us today in worship. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I am so excited about what the Lord is doing and I'm looking forward to our opportunity to come together and worship together in person. But until then, we continue to reach out virtually. We continue to reach out email and e-blast and text and all the different ways that we have. And we pray that you also are reaching out to one another. During this time, please make sure that you're loving on all of those who you have the opportunity to love one, love someone. Because remember, we are commanded to love one another. How do we know that you're one of Christ's disciples? It's by your love one to the other. We, now listen, today is going to be a great Sunday. Today we have a speaker for you that you will totally enjoy. Please, please, Elder Mark Cliff Fontaine, he has served Kingdom Worship Center for years and years. He is a part of our church. He has a lovely family. And today he is coming to bring the word of the Lord for us. So just hold on to your seats, buckle in, get your family, come up close around the computer or the TV screen, whatever it is that you're streaming on, and make sure you are joining us in worship. God bless you. We'll talk to you soon. And welcome to Kingdom Worship Center. I am Zelie DePerry and this is my co-host, Paula Frazier. On behalf of Bishop Gregory Dennis and Pastor Tanya Dennis, we'd like to welcome you to our 10 a.m. service. Yes. Thank you so much for tuning in. And thank you for choosing Kingdom Worship Center to be your place of worship today. On today, we are about to go into our praise and worship. So, oh, magnify the Lord with Hallelujah. us and let us exalt his name. Let's go in with the praise and worship team at this time. We worship you, we adore you, we love you. We thank you just for who you are. Right now, we take this moment just to focus on you. We're not asking for anything. We're just saying thank you. Things could be a lot different. Things could be another way. We just want to thank you because you know exactly what you're doing. You know right where you have us. And you are in control. So we thank you, God, that you are totally sovereign and you know exactly what you're doing. You've been God a long time. And you're not leaving your throne anytime soon. So we trust you. We trust you in your sovereignty. We trust you. We trust you in your power. We trust you in the ability that you know what to do. We trust you that you hold our purpose and our destiny. 
And we thank you for keeping us. We thank you. We thank you just for who you are, just for who you are, just for who you are. So right now in your homes, just lift your hands, just lift your hands, just lift your hands. Thank you, Jesus. Just start giving him some words of worship, words of honor. towards you, turn our minds towards you, place our affections on, crown you with many crowns, Lord, we cast down our golden crown, we cast down our golden crown, and we crown you, we crown you, we crown you, Lord. You are King of kings. You are Lord of lords. You're my very present help. You're my El Shaddai, Lord. You're my good, good Father. You're my good, good Shepherd. We call you Abba, Father. We call you Abba, Father. You're my King and my Lord. You're my King and Lord. You're my King and Lord. Hallelujah. We lift you high, we lift you high. 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 Above every circumstance, everything that we are facing. Hallelujah. We magnify you, we magnify you, we magnify you. We enter your gates with thanksgiving and into your courts with praise. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, Jesus. We lift you high, we lift you high. 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 And we lift you high, we lift you high. Yes, we do. All the glory is due to you. We lift you high, we lift you high. We lift you high, Jesus. We give you the highest praise, Lord. We give you the highest praise, Lord. Yes, we give you the highest praise. We lift you high, we lift you high. Yes, we lift you high. For you're the King of kings. And you're the Lord of lords. All creation bows before you. We lift you high, we lift you high. We lift you high, we lift you high. We lift you high.
Lord, we bless you. Clap your hands and give God praise. Hallelujah. 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 Let's go into his presence. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Hallelujah. temple you turn shepherds into kings you give the barren songs to sing and you will turn these sufferings into your glory come on let's go you make you turn seas into dry lands you make the mountains yeah and you will make these ruins into your temple you turn shepherds into kings. You give the barren songs to sing. And you will turn these sufferings into glory. One more time. We're going to do it one more time. Do one, do one more time. You turn seas. Come on. You turn seas into dry land. You make the mountains tremble. And you will make these ruins. You will make these ruins into your temple. You turn shepherds into kings. You give the barren songs to sing. And you will turn these sufferings in. You will turn these sufferings into your glory. Hey, and you know, and you know exactly what you're doing. So we can dance among these ruins. So we can dance among these
says, oh yes and amen. So I will dance among these ruins. Your promises are yes and amen. So I will dance among these ruins. And you know exactly what you're doing. So we can dance among these ruins. And we know that you can do all things yeah so we can dance and shout and sing in the ruins i want to do that part one more time and you know and you know exactly exactly what you're doing yeah. so we can dance so we can We will hold on to our praise. Your praise shall continually be in my mouth.
silent even in the midst of issues and I will not be there's no trial that can quiet my praise or my worship and I will not be Make a pick count of full or empty. You won't be able to, I won't be silent. And I will, sickness and in health, better or worse, I will not be silent. And Lord, I will not be silent. my worship all of my worship father receive my worship all of my worship receive my worship all of my worship father receive my worship all of my worship here's my worship all of my worship receive my worship all of my worship here's my worship all of my, 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 all of my,
I worship you, mighty God. I worship you, Father God. I worship you, mighty God. I worship you, Father God. I worship you, mighty God. I worship you, Father God. Father, I worship you, Father God. I worship you, Father God. I worship you, Father God. Woo! I worship you, Father God. Woo! I worship you, Father God. I worship you, Father God. And I will not be silent. I will always worship.
Glory to Jesus. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Father, we bless you today. We thank you for the opportunity to worship in your presence. We are confident, not only because we've read it, because we've heard it, but now because we have also experienced it. In your presence is the fullness of joy. And at your right hand, there is pleasure evermore. We thank you, Lord, for what you've done. You brought us through many things and you are preparing us to endure many more things. And I thank you for the grace of Jesus Christ who has delivered us such a great salvation. And I thank you for the peace of Jesus Christ, which keeps us in the face of all sorts of turmoil, all sorts of danger, all sorts of challenge. These things are absolutely nothing in comparison to what the Lord has done for us and what he has prepared for those that love him. So Father, as we go into your word this morning, I thank you for giving us clarity and understanding. I thank you, O oh God, for giving us the simplicity of the gospel, but yet the profound power that comes with the gospel of Jesus Christ. So shall it impact our hearts, so shall it impact our minds, and so shall we be transformed into the very image of your Son, destroying the kingdom of darkness and declaring the kingdom of light. In the mighty name of Jesus, our Savior, we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. We are so glad to be in the house of the Lord with you this morning. Thank you so much for welcoming us into your place of worship, whether that's in your home or perhaps in your car, wherever you might find yourself this morning. We're just delighted to have this opportunity to come together, to touch and to agree concerning the things of the Lord and observe how the Lord will continue to bless his people and will continue to watch over his word concerning us to perform it. I'm so grateful this morning that uh, we are able to be in this house of worship, this place called Kingdom Worship Center, and it transcends these four walls today as we are broadcasting all across the airwaves and streaming all across the internet. Um, God is doing great things for us, whereof we are glad today. And we certainly are honoring God for all that he's done. Give honor to our set gifts, the senior pastors of this house of worship, Bishop Gregory Dennis and First Lady, Lady Tanya Dennis. Dear friends of mine, I've known them for years and years, and we've grown up together, come into our adult lives together. And I'm glad to see what God is doing, not only for them, but for all of us that have been associated by this particular plan of the Lord. Certainly, if you will bear with me for just a few moments, we're going to go right into the word of the Lord. Um, I certainly also want to give thanks to God for my family and my household. The Lord has kept us well during these last several months with this season of COVID-19 and um, has prospered us. And like many households, uh, we've endured some sense of loss and some sense of hurt, some sense of pain. Um, I don't think there's a single family across this nation, perhaps even around this globe, that has not lost someone or something. Um, but yet in all of this, I'm glad to say that God is faithful. He has never, ever, ever let us down because he has never, ever, ever let his word down. Everything God has spoken, my brothers and sisters, it has come to pass. And I guarantee you, if you sense yourself to be in a holding pattern, guess what? The Lord is watching over his word to perform it. Amen. That is a promise that we have, and we will never let go of that promise. Amen. I want to encourage us today um, to please, while we're in this season, as we're transitioning and as the nation is opening up in various states and counties, all around the country are resuming a normal business. Let's please make sure that we hold fast to that which we have received of the Lord over this last season in our lives. Um, I hope that we have not only taken time to perhaps do some extra things around our homes as we've been on lockdown, as we've been still, uh, perhaps get ahead on some of our work as we enjoy and endure our professional lives, but I hope that we've also taken time to learn of the Lord, that we've taken time to get in our Bibles, and we've taken time to reestablish some, um, some strength in the relationship that we have with the Lord, even as we've done so with the relationships that we have with one another. Please, brothers and sisters, take time to read your Bible. 
and then take time to study the things that you have read. A couple of awesome resources I'd like to share with you this morning. Um, blueletterbible.org, biblegateway.com. These are all free resources out there that will encourage you in the study of the word as you build up your soul uh, for these days and this time. Thebibleproject.com, Right Now Media, that's a facility that our church actually provides for our membership. So please take advantage of all these resources. More and more, we must comfort ourselves and build ourselves and rehearse ourselves in understanding exactly why it was that Jesus actually came. You know, we get excited, we are thrilled to know that we have relationship with the Lord, but I want us to make sure that no matter what we face, no matter what we endure, that we can always articulate and always defend an understanding of why it is that Jesus actually came. Did he come to make sure that we live this life in wealth according to the riches of this world? Did he come to make sure that we have the finest of clothes and the best of cars? Eh, those are things that I don't think the Lord is really so concerned about. The Bible tells us that Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. I'm not talking about the dude with the horns and the pitchfork and the long tail with the spike at the end of it. I'm talking about to destroy the works of the adversary of your soul. This is why Jesus came. That's 1 John 3 and 8, right? He also came to reconcile everything back to himself. Things on earth as well as things in heaven. Colossians 1 and 20. The Lord is reconciling all this back to himself, making sure that the world and the worlds are reconciled right back to him. So I tell you, with all that we've seen over these last several weeks and months, the Lord is doing exactly what the Lord intended to do. He is bringing dominion right back where it belongs, and that's in the palm of his hand. Glory to God. And I got good news for us. We're also made to sit down with him in heavenly places. We reign with him. We rest with him. This is our heritage in the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let me move on lest I lose myself in uh, this self-encouragement right here. Thank be to God for all things that he's done. Um, we're going to get ready to go into the word of the Lord. I want to share with you um, some brief encouragement in the book or rather the epistle to the Ephesians. Uh, we'll begin in chapter 5, so if you have your Bibles, turn with me to Ephesians chapter number, number 5. We'll be reading and walking through just five verses there. We don't have a whole lot of time this morning, and I want to respect your attention. We'll start at verse number 15 and peruse down through verse 20. Um, before we get into the reading of the scripture, let me just start with a snap overview of the letter before we take our text for today, before we actually read through the text. Um, I think it will better establish the approach vector that we want to take. So Ephesians, the letter to the Ephesians, as was written by the Apostle Paul, there are three general themes that we observe here. The first one is that Christ has reconciled all creation to himself and to God. All right. The second theme that we see here is that Christ has united people from all nations to himself and to one another in his church. And then the third theme, which is what we're going to um, peruse a bit today, is this, that believers must live as a new people. The Bible says that if any man's in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. And behold, take a look at this. Take a look at yourself. Take a look at me. Take a look at one another. Understand that in Christ, all things are made new. So we're going to take a look at that today and understand that believers must live as new people. Our drop zone is right there in that third thematic segment. All right, so let's go to the scripture. Let's read. I'll be reading this morning from the New Living Translation. I invite you to follow along with me, starting at chapter number five of Ephesians and the 15th verse, as closely as you can, according to your translation. And I'm sure that we will arrive at a common conclusion that will bless our souls. Amen? Amen. So the Bible reads like this. New Living Translation, verse 15. So be careful how you live. Don't live like fools but like those who are wise. Make the most of every opportunity in these evil days. Verse 17 goes on to read, don't act thoughtlessly, but understand what the Lord wants you to do. Don't be drunk with wine, because that will ruin your life. 
Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves and making music to the Lord in your hearts and give thanks for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So, Father, bless this word as we go into it. I thank you for the strength and the encouragement that we shall receive in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 All right. So let's go back to verse 15. I just want to walk through these scriptures a little bit. I tend to sometimes be an old school kind of preacher. I love the word of God and it leaves so much insight, so much understanding for our lives. And I believe that as we read the scriptures and as we feast and fellowship in the scriptures, the Holy Spirit starts to speak to our hearts and gives us great understanding and insight as to how we are to live. Amen. Praise the Lord. So Paul, the apostle, he starts out this particular section of scripture advising us and admonishing the saints to be careful of how they are living. Understanding the fact that in the earlier chapters of the book, we saw that Christ has now reestablished dominion and he started to reconcile the world to himself and bring the saints back to him. As we gain this understanding and start to assert and receive our posture in Jesus Christ, we have to be certain that we are careful of how it is we live from day to day. We don't want to live like a foolish man, but rather we would rather live and approach our lives as one who is wise. Living foolishly versus living wisely. Paul's admonition is to pay sincere attention. Now, I think it's worth mentioning that the framework of this wisdom versus this foolishness is not just about our church lives. We've seen tremendous disruption to our church lives over the last three months. But yet, our rest of our lives, the remainder of our lives, have had to continue. We've still had to somehow get up to find work. We've still had to make sure that our houses were maintained. And God knows that the U.S. Postal Service did not stop delivering bills for us to pay. All right, we've filed our taxes. Some of us have gotten returns already. Some of us have gotten stimulus checks. I don't know where my stimulus is. I got a letter. And they said a, a card is coming, but there's nothing in the mailbox from day to day. But praise the Lord, I'll just wait on Jesus and it'll show up after a while. Praise the Lord. But there is all kinds of stuff that's been disrupted. So it's not just about our church lives, but rather it's about our holistic being. The whole of me must be one that understands how to live wise and not to be foolish in this day. All right. We don't want to act like fools, rather, but those who have come to a sense of understanding of what it is the Lord would have us to do. Christ's work was for all of us. He didn't just save the church me. He didn't just save the, the me that knows how to fall down and worship when the music is wonderful and when the songs play. He saved the professional me as well. He also saved the family me so that my entire life, your holistic life, is now one that the Lord can demonstrate dominance in and one that shows forth the testimony of who he is in the earth. Something about fools. And the Bible is very clear with a single statement uh, about fools in Psalm number 14 and 1. The Bible says that the fool has declared in his heart that there is no God. There's an obvious atheistic view that many of us will claim to cause exclusion from us being included of being foolish in this sense. Because after all, I believe in God. After all, I know who God is. After all, he saved my life. But brothers and sisters, can I challenge you to take a slightly different vantage point? Have there been vicissitudes that have challenged your life? In other words, have there been highs and lows and ups and downs and fluctuations that have challenged your life and perhaps caused you to consider that the Lord has aborted presence with you? What a foolish posture for us to take. What a foolish posture for us to start to ascertain, to think that God is not interested or to think that the Lord has aborted interaction with our lives because we don't quite see coming to pass the things that we want to see coming to pass. Could it be instead that perhaps my expectation is just a little bit frustrated by the patience that the Lord is working out in my life? Don't you know that the trying of your faith works patience and patience is working out strength and all of that leaves you in a posture where you will never, ever be ashamed of what the Lord has called on in your life? We are not fools. 
We are not going to take that posture that the Lord is not active in our lives or that the Lord has aborted consideration of our lives. I am 100 convinced, 100 percent convinced that he is full on active. In fact, the Lord is day by day orchestrating every step that I take, day by day orchestrating every posture that we stand in, day by day orchestrating every movement that we make. That we make. I prove it to you. The Bible says that the steps of a righteous man man are ordered by the Lord. Hallelujah. And he delights in his way. Even if I get to a tough spot where it seems like my knees are going to buckle, even if it seems like my foot is coming nigh slipping and I'm going to be falling down, the Bible says that the Lord is so faithful. He is so just over his word that he will uphold us with his hand. Blessed be the name of Jesus. So the fool said there's no God. We won't be in that posture. We will never be found where we're saying that God's not active and God's not present or God has forsaken us. The promise of the word of the Lord was that I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Now, wisdom. Let's move on here. Wisdom. The Bible also declares that wisdom starts with the fear of the Lord. So what does this mean, Elder Fontaine? What do you mean wisdom starts with the fear of the Lord? I was taught that maybe I shouldn't be afraid of God. Do I have to be afraid of him? Do I have to tremble before him? Brothers and sisters, no, absolutely not. The fear of the Lord is simply this. We have a humility and we have a reverence before the Lord our God. I don't have a whole, whole lot that I need to say here. I promise you, though, if we come to the posture that as we face our day to day living, where our heart is humbled before the Lord, where our prospect and our perspective always identifies that I've got to have a reverence for my God, then I guarantee you, you have now received an open door into a realm of wisdom for your life. The wisdom of the Lord will grace you and grant you with all kinds of insight and all kinds of understanding that perhaps may have been a little bit difficult to receive before. The only thing that I want to encourage you to do with the wisdom that God has set before us is to bolster your prayer life by continuing to acknowledge the sovereignty and acknowledge the grace of Jesus Christ, whom you serve and whom loves you. Never, ever, ever will you allow or shall you allow the sovereignty of God to be dismissed from your life. Our God is in control of every aspect of our being. The Bible records it like this, from the rising of a sun until the going down of the same, we count his name worthy to be praised. So your prayerful, your prayerful and your praiseful lifestyle is all that you need to start to gain access to the wisdom of God. I guarantee you, the more you acknowledge him in every way, he's going to direct your path. Trust in the Lord, my brothers and sisters, with all your your heart. Please, please, please don't you dare try to lean to your own understanding. Elder Fontaine, why are you so hard about this? Because in the day when we face the kinds of challenges we faced over the last three months, not only with COVID, but also with the racial disharmony, also with the protesting disharmony, also with the other things that are happening. There's um, financial disharmony that's all around us, and we haven't seen all of it yet. Who knows what this wave is going to look like when it comes back down from the shore? But one thing I will do, I will acknowledge him in every way. One thing he will do for me in that acknowledgement is he will direct my path. I guarantee you, if you look to the Lord, he's going to see you through whatever it is that's facing your life. It's a promise of God. It is not my promise to you. It is the Lord's promise to his people. Hallelujah. It is not my encouragement alone to you. It's what God said. It's what he's proven. It's what he's destined to do for us because our God cannot lie. Neither can he fail. He's not the son of man that she, he should have need of repenting for anything. Good God almighty. Hallelujah. Let's move on. Let's move on. Verse number 16 and 17. It reads like this. Make the most of every opportunity in these evil days. Don't act thoughtlessly, but understand what the Lord wants you to do. Let me encourage you on this. Please don't allow dark days to dismiss or to discourage the plan God has given you for your daily living. 
The Bible tells us to make the most of opportunity in these evil days. And God knows the days are evil. God knows that the days are dark. And what do we mean by evil days? The days are full of labors. The days are full of annoyances. The days are full of hardships. The days are full of pressing moments. The days are full of harassment. The days are full of all kinds of anguish and toil and strife. That's the sum of evil days that are all around us. And we're seeing they're getting more evil and more evil as the sun rises and as the sun sets. But can I tell you this? Wherever sin and darkness is abounding, can I encourage you that the grace of God is much more abounding? Yes. Hallelujah. Yes, Let the Lord encourage us to maximize the allotment of time that we have. We're going to make the most of every moment we get in this evil day. Glory to God. The evil does not shut us down as believers. The darkness and the turmoil and the toil does not hinder us as believers. As believers, I find that I'm made stronger. I find that I'm made more encouraged. I find that I'm made more resolved because the promise of God is active in my life. Because the promise of God is working in our lives. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. So maximize the allotment of time. There's only so much time we get, right? The Bible says that the days of a man are short. They're full of trouble. But you know what? While I have these days, I'm going to live them to the best of my ability. I'm not quite ready to lay down my life just yet. The Lord hasn't quite called for it in that manner. So please don't test it because I'm not going to let you have it. Please remind the adversary of your soul that he can only do so much. Hallelujah. There's a liveliness that the Lord has active in you because the life you live is not just your own. The life we live, we live through who? Through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Who has lived and was dead but is alive again. And can I encourage you with this? He's alive forevermore. So there's eternal life that's active in you. There's eternal life that's active in me. I've got to optimize every single moment so there's no job too hard for me. There's no task that's too difficult for me to figure out. I have access to the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. He speaks to me and he reads the hearts and minds of men. He understands the mysteries of this world and he shares them with us. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I am having such a good time right here. Glory to Jesus. Maximize the allotment of time you've been given. And every hour that the Lord has given you, can I tell you that he's also given you grace to overcome and to endure. It's granted to us because it is purposeful. It is not a happenstance or offering that God has given us. He has you here at this time, at this moment, enduring what you're enduring right now because there is purpose active in you. Let the purpose of God, the purpose of Christ unfold in your life. Glory to Jesus. The best antidote we have for wasted time is this. I've got to come to a close. The best antidote we have for wasted time is gaining an understanding of what the Lord wants us to do. You are not meant to be thoughtless about how you perform day by day. You are not meant to be aimless about anything in your life. Even Israel, when they were so-called wandering around the wilderness, they were not just out there aimless. They were being led every day and every night. Doesn't the Bible record it that he led them by a cloud in the day and he led them by a pillar of fire that night? He, they were not just wandering, wondering where do we go next? What's happening for us next? No, the Lord led them until whatever needed to fall out of their presence, whatever needed to fall away that would hurt their faith began to die and be left out there in the wilderness so they can receive the promise of God. Brother, sister, you keep on following that pillar by day. You keep on following that fire by night. And I guarantee you the Lord will bring you to the place that he has promised you. He is faithful that promised. Praise the Lord. That applies to so much for our lives regarding our family, regarding our development, whether that's educational or professional, regarding our faith. Brothers and sisters, ask the Lord, ask the Lord, ask the Lord. Jeremiah 33 and 3, it says, call to me, ask me, and I will answer you and show you tremendous things, stupendous things that you just did not know. 
His response, I guarantee you, will be remarkable. Glory to Jesus. I got to close on this, so let's go on 18 and 19. Don't be drunk with wine because that's going to ruin your life. Okay? This is a very, very practical statement. Please don't be drunk with wine. That's going to just ruin your life. But instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. The actual effects and intent of drunkenness usually is for someone to escape or to end up bringing a sense of numbness, um, sometimes because of loneliness or because of anxiety. And the Bible declares that this leads to ruin. There's not a whole lot that I need to really say about that. We've seen drunks. We've seen people crashed out. Some of us may have even been there ourselves. And we know that when you're in that state, there's really not a whole lot that you can do for anybody else, especially anything that you can do much for yourself. But let us rather turn our attention to the therapy of the Holy Ghost. I know times aren't always comfortable. I know times don't always feel good. But we do have a therapeutic presence in the Holy Ghost. What do you mean he's therapeutic? Well, the Bible says he's our comforter. The Bible calls him our counselor. The Bible calls him our helper. So he is always there to bring that therapy to your soul. If it was a matter of medication, then we'd all be walking around totally whole and healthy. But sometimes our soul just gets bruised. Sometimes our soul gets damaged. And we just need the therapeutic presence of the Holy Spirit. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. Well, what does that mean, Elder Fontaine? It means that my thoughts are not governed by my own emotions and feelings. My thoughts are governed by the Holy Spirit and what he's spoken. It means that my desires are tempered. Will my desires always go away? Not necessarily so, but I do thank God for the help of the Holy Ghost to keep me in check. That means that my outlook on life is conditioned. So I'm not looking for or expecting failure. I'm looking for and expecting success, not of my own strength and not of my own power. But like the Bible says, by the Spirit, says the Lord. Amen? Amen. 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 Finally, brothers and sisters, sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves, making music to the Lord in your hearts, and give thanks for everything everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. One thing I love about Thanksgiving, it is the way that we enter the Lord's gates. It's the way that we enter his temple. When a heart is thankful, there's just something that's compassionate about it. I know whenever I have opportunity to enter a building and there are other people nearby and I hold the door open, I don't mind doing it because that's what I was trained to do, but it just feels a little bit better. My arm feels a little bit stronger when those who take advantage of that courtesy say, thank you, sir. And it's my good pleasure to respond, well, you're welcome. Well, can I tell you that when we give thanks to the Lord, it's just something that's recognized a little bit better. We begin to realize the strength that he has given us. So let us Give thanks for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Can I pray with us today? Come on and pray with me. Bow your heads. Father, we thank you for your word of instruction. And Lord, living this life is not always easy. There are moments that we end up confused. Sometimes, Lord, I would even admit I've started my day confused, not sure what you wanted out of me not sure what you're asking for, not sure how I can accomplish what I'm sensing you're calling me to do. But God, I thank you today that you have called us to sobriety in the Holy Ghost. I thank you, Lord, that we are going to have opportunity and we take opportunity to make advantage of every moment we have been given in this life. So God, I thank you today that we will have a new outlook, that as we start this morrow, as we start this week, as we start whatever is ahead of us, we're going to do so with the intent to impact it fully with the insight of the Holy Ghost. Lord God, we know that you're one, active, and two, you're present. You never ever abandon us. That's a foolish consideration and we reject it and send that right back to the enemy, the adversary of our souls. Our God is with us, and our God has sustained us. He's been faithful in times past, and I do not see any shadow of turning with him. So we face today and we face tomorrow with the strength of the Lord. 
Now, Father, should there be one who does not know you in the pardon of their sin, I want them to understand today, Lord, that you have already paid the debt. God, you have given your son, Jesus Christ, who laid down his life on the cross, shed his blood, paid the sin debt for all time. And I thank you, Jesus, that if we would but just receive you in our hearts, just confess with our mouths the Lord Jesus, we indeed can walk in this gospel of salvation because the good news is that the work has already been done and all we need to do is receive Jesus Christ today. Brothers and sisters, those who may not know the Lord, I invite you to receive the Lord into your heart. Um, our numbers are on the screen. Please take time to reach out to us. We'd love to pray with you and love to encourage you in the Lord. God bless you today. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. What a powerful word of the Lord from Elder Mark Cliff Fontaine. I told you that this word was going to bless your life. I mean, I was all up on my phone while he was speaking and just taking my notes and typing while he was going through. And I'm telling you, there were some great things as we went through. Can I tell you some of the things I wrote down and you share, share in your posts what you actually heard. Some of the things that I was that really just got me was I have eternal life living inside of me. What's inside of me? Oh, my God, that y'all know that just took me out when he talked about it's eternal I, was, I just yeah yeah and so, so there's so much there's so much but this is how we live we don't live like everyone else we live in wisdom we live in the place that God has for us we follow his instruction and he's always with us so be encouraged saints we thank you so much Elder Fontaine for such a powerful word and I pray it's a word that we will continue to live by God bless you Hello, Kingdom family. It's so, so, so good to be here on this morning and to be able to hear the word of God. It was phenomenal. It was phenomenal. Well, I want you to know that the women's ministry, we had an awesome session on yesterday. And I want you to tune in if you were unable to do so. I want you to go to Kingdom Worship Center's Facebook page, Team KWC, that's T-E-E-M, two E's, okay? Team KWC, and I want you to join us on the conversation. Here we are talking about the things that have happened in our world, and specifically we address systemic racism, we address those things that are paralyzing our community. And I want you to know that the women of God, we stepped forward and we spoke concerning those things. According to Genesis 3 and 15, it references that God was putting enmity between the serpent and the woman. And let me tell you this, we are ready to bruise him. We are ready to annihilate him. And we're gonna do all that we can to have a voice that will speak life and light to God's people. So go back and look at it. And women of God, join us. Please join us for prayer. Join us for prayer every Wednesday. We are praying at 7 a.m., specifically first Wednesdays. We want you to be with us. Please do not hesitate to reach out to your women's council at women's council at kingdomworshipcenter.org. God bless you. We love you. Bye. What a word, what a word. Yes. Coming from our pastor, Mark Cliff Fontaine. Uh, excellent word. This is how we live. Hallelujah. Yes. Such a great word. I hope that you enjoyed the word, enjoyed the service. I hope it was able to minister to your souls, to your needs, whatever you're asking God to do. I hope that that word ministered to you. Thank you again for choosing Kingdom Worship Center to be your place of worship. Yes, that word was excellent. Good word, Selena. good word. I mean, in the time that we're in, with everything that's going on, and with George Floyd, the pandemic, the COVID, everything that's going on, people without jobs, but we know God has yes, our back. He is, yes. he is backing yes. us in every yes. area of our lives, yes. and that we just got to trust him and know that he is there. And we're coming yes. out with victory, Amen. victory on our side. Amen. And I just praise God because he is blessing us to see this through. We're going to be those people next year yes. talking about how we live during this time. Kingdom Worship Center offers small group ministries. And what's missing? 
that would be you. If you're interested in finding out about our small groups, please email us for, to request information at info at kingdomworshipcenter.org. Again, that is info at kingdomworshipcenter.org. We love to see you in our small groups. It's an intimate group and it's a lot of learning that's going on. So we'd love to see you there. Yes, not only do we take care of the adults, but we take care of our small children Amen. too. We take care of our young adults, and if you would like information in getting your children or young people you would like to join in, we have those every second and fourth Sunday. Yes. Today is second Sunday. There'll be meeting between for the young children at 1130 and the young adults at 1230 in the light room. And you can get info on that at yaya at kingdomworshipcenter.org. Didn't you just have a birthday? Yes, I did. All right. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Thank you. Thank You're welcome. You. You're welcome. <laughs> it's time for us to give our offering. Yes. Hallelujah. So there's four ways that you can give. You can give via Cash App. Yes. You can give by Givelify. You can go on our website at kingdomworshipcenter.org and press the link for giving. And you can also still mail your checks in for those who still have a checkbook. You can still mail your checks into 6419 York Road. That's Towson, Maryland, 21212. Again, that's Cash App, Givelify. KingdomWorshipCenter.org, and you can mail your checks into 6419 York Road. Because even in the midst of this pandemic, even in the midst of this recession, yes. God is still faithful. Yes, and we is. dare yes, not rob God of all the, all the blessings that he's bestowed upon us. Amen. So please find it in your heart to continue to pay your tithes. I know it's been a while since we've been in church, but we never want to be accused of robbing God of what's Amen. due unto him. So please at that, continue to give as you've given before in the past. Thank you so much, and we love you, and we appreciate all that you're doing. Also, if you would like to follow us, and you would like to join our text group, yes. our text list, rather, you can um, give a text with the keywords KWC text to 99000. Yes. Again, that is KWC text at 99000. Zero, zero, zero. And if you would like to follow us, we can be followed on Kingdom Worship Center on Facebook. We can be followed at Kingdom Worship Center Maryland on Twitter and Instagram. So we can be followed anywhere that you are online. Follow us in those places. And we hope that this service has really met your needs spiritually, emotionally, just in whatever, health-wise, physically, yeah. that God has healed your body on today. And we pray that every area of your life yeah. is in excellent order yes. and that you're following God's word. Yeah. And with that being said, we hope that you join us next Sunday at 10 a.m. at K Kingdom Worship Center Media at kwc.church online. Thank you so much again for tuning in. And we just ask that you would be careful this week. Please be sure to be safe. Always practice your social distance. Wear your mask and just have a wonderful week, a forget victorious week. Hands. And don't forget to wash your hands. God bless you. We love you. Thank you so much again for tuning in. Be blessed. <laughs>